Uh, kia ora, Mr. Speaker. Nā mihi nui, kia koutou. Kia ora. I rise to support the Antarctica Environmental Protection Liability Annex Amendment Bill. Mr. Speaker, Antarctica is a special, pristine place. It's the health of the world can be measured in the ice kilometres thick in Antarctica. It's a place that New Zealand has a special relation to, to, both historical, both environmentally, and both as a pioneer for protecting it internationally. Mr Speaker, unlike some of the members who have touched on the debate of being privileged enough to travel to Antarctica, I haven't been fortunate enough to be down there, but I have seen some of the amazing cinematography in the film The Last Ocean. Mr Speaker, this is a powerful film which I urge all members of Parliament to see uh, by an esteemed and now award-winning New Zealand filmmaker who uses the film to argue quite coherently, quite logically and quite passionately for protection of a region which is of special significance to New Zealand, which is the Ross Sea, which New Zealand unfortunately has pioneered and is leading the exploitation with the dangerous and I believe uh, unscientifically based current toothfish fishery down there, Mr Speaker. Uh, I guess a special point for you, Mr Speaker, I am disappointed that I have not been able to show this film to members of Parliament despite repeated requests and unfortunately the Green Party, along with New Zealand First and the Labour Party, have not been able to screen this film and despite my challenge to numerous national members to join us so that we can show this film Mr Speaker, I hope you sir can allow this uh, special film of which is a uh, real New Zealand art work can be shown. So Mr Speaker I think if more of us had been able to go down there or had seen this film we would know the importance and the challenge that we have facing us. Antarctica quite plainly is under threat. It's not just climate change which we've heard about today. Um, I respond to the interjection. I'd love to go down in a sailboat. I'd go down tomorrow if you'd give me a berth. I'd love to go down. I think every Kiwi should get the chance. But this is one of the problems. Now we've got tens of thousands of people going down to Antarctica every year. It's not just the climate change. It's not just the fishing boats. It's those tens of thousands of tourists, Mr Speaker. And what we've seen is numerous concerning incidents. Just, Mr Speaker, looking through some of the history, what we've seen is in 2008, the MV Yushaya ran aground. We've seen the Ocean Nova uh, grounded. We've seen in the last couple of years the Jungwoo 2, the Sparta, and tragically the number one in Sung losing 22 lives down there. We've seen the Japanese whaling ship, the Nishin Maru, uh, explode, caught fire, resulting in loss of life. We've seen the Argos, Georgia, drifting for 15 days when it lost power. We've seen a litany of accidents happening down there, many of them avoidable. So it's good, Mr Speaker, that we're uh, debating this legislation, which deals with some of those real uh, growing threats facing Antarctica and the oceans around it. So what this bill does is the sixth annex to the Environmental Protocol, which this annex was adopted in 2005. It establishes the liability regime. It has financial limit. It requires New Zealand operators to that give rise to or discover an emergency to notify the New Zealand Government and it provides penalties and offences for failing to take prompt and effective action. Mr Speaker, we would have preferred uh, something stronger. Uh, this isn't a criticism of the previous negotiators who we believe did do a good job, but what we do believe is we actually do need a comprehensive liability regime. What we've seen over the course of the arena was that New Zealand wasn't prepared our liability regime capped under the Resource Management Act to $600,000, Mr Speaker. What we know is the RENA has cost the New Zealand taxpayers tens of millions of dollars. It's a good example where we need to have legislative forethought to prepare for liability when we know accidents will happen. So I'd like to touch on our special relationship with Antarctica. We uh, obviously was a jumping off spot for many of the discoverers. We were an original signatory back in 1959. And it is important, Mr Speaker, that we do pass this legislation because our turning this bill into an act does help turn this annex into reality when 28 Antarctic signatory nations uh, all do likewise. So, Mr Speaker, what we're passing today is the missing piece of the environmental Antarctica Protocol, which was uh, negotiated in 1991, came to effect in 1998, and it's good that New Zealand is playing its role protecting the Antarctic continent. We'd share Labour's concerns with the slow response by the government bench that has been on the order paper for an awful long time, but I guess when, you're, when you are the Minister for Conservation, Kate Wilkinson, and you're currently sitting on what is the second longest bill ever to languish in a select committee, the Marine Reserves Bill, 
which is coming up to, I think, its decade anniversary in Select Committee. But I guess if the Marine Reserves Bill is your benchmark, she's not doing too bad with this one. <laughs> Mr Speaker, I guess the question the government benches hasn't answered, why has it languished so long? Because I don't, I don't agree with Labour. I don't think it's just poor management. I think poor management of the House does play a role. But I think what we've seen is... In this current term of the government, the government take a very decidedly anti-environmental tack. They've come down very hard. We've seen them walk out of Kyoto. We've seen them personally attack scientists. We've seen them lax lyrical about the clean green brand, likening it to McDonald's. Uh, Mr Speaker, if there's anything so fatty and sugar-coated and not what it makes out it should be, such as a McDonald's burger, Mr Speaker, I think we are likening it to what the National Party's vision of a clean green brand is. Mr Speaker, what we've seen is a minister who's prepared to act as an accessory to the extinction of the Maui's dolphin. So while Jonathan Hayes talks about our clean green brand, we're running it through the dirt. We've seen the government take a decidedly anti-environmental turn. Mr Speaker, they're acting as if environmental vandals. So, Mr Speaker, we are happy that we're finally getting progress on it. We urge progress, likewise, on the Marine Reserves Bill. But, Mr Speaker, what we think we need to do is have now a discussion about how we do make this regime more comprehensive. And just lastly, Mr Speaker, I'd... Uh, welcome the call by the Labour benches that we should have a cross-party agreement when it comes to protection of the Ross Sea. Mr Speaker, it was embarrassing for New Zealand to walk out on negotiations with the United States Government on protecting the Ross Sea. It was embarrassing that we were seen to be there at the Kamala negotiations protecting our own narrow, small, vested fishing interests. We're talking about 0.17 per cent of our fishing, and our Government was prepared to run that clean green brand through the mud. But I guess the Labour member, Shane Jones, knows all about that, Mr Speaker. It would be good to have a cross-party support for protecting the Ross Sea. I think we have a special opportunity now that Kamala has agreed to a second negotiating period next year. This is a real opportunity for New Zealand to now show some leadership. I'd love to see the Minister, Murray McCulley, do some active lobbying around the world. We do have an opportunity. I think the world does want to see greater environmental protection and marine reserves down there. I believe we can see it. So, Mr Speaker, all in all, we welcome voting for this bill. We think extended hours is a good use of the House's time. Perhaps this could have been adopted earlier. We'd like to go a bit stronger, and we'd open that discussion in the future. But, Mr Speaker, it's good to be passing this legislation today. Kia ora.